If you came here from TikTok or Instagram, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, what the hell took you so long? And if you found this video organically, welcome. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. During one of those painfully expensive trips to Target, I took a stroll down the toy aisle to see what they have, and I came across a two-pack of Bane and Batman. So I bought it, and decided to try to make the iconic scene of Bane breaking Batman's back. I mean, sure, why not? Sounds like a good time to me. These toys were pretty rough, and definitely needed a whole lot of work. At least Batman had some articulation I could work with. This is my disappointed face. I broke out a Sharpie and marked up where I wanted to cut him. And then I ripped his head off. And Batman's too. Oh god, that was on there. After playing with my toys, I mean doing some test posing, I realized Batman had a lot of armor that I was going to have to work around. So I ran back out to the store and bought a different Batman. This one looks more like the comic book opposed to the Dark Knight armor. And then it was time to play with my toys some more. I mean, make TikTok videos. And after I was finished, let the disassembly begin. That went right up my nose. And always wear your safety glasses, kids. After effectively turning Bane into a puzzle, I had to figure out how to put him back together. I used floral and sculpting wire to fashion some sort of rough skeleton to wrap around the interior structures that were left to keep him together and allow him to stand on his own. This took a bit of time and some super glue and some hot glue just to get that position right and make sure it didn't fall apart on me. After I got his legs and waist in the position that I was looking for, it was time to work on his arms, which was the exact same process. I also cut off the weird disc thingies on his arms that held them into place. Uh, they were just preventing me from rotating his arms into the position that I was looking for. Mm-hmm, that was me gluing my finger to the model. Thin sloop, slooper glue. Thin super glue will get you every time. I tacked his shoulders into place to get a rough idea of how I wanted them to be positioned, and then I broke out the heat gun. Bane's hands were made of a completely different plastic than the rest of his body. It could be heated up and maneuvered into pretty much any position you wanted it to, and then when it cooled down, it hardened and stayed in place. And with that, it's time to break out the other Batman. After giving him a once-over and also doing some test positioning, I realized 
Bane is going to have to hold the weight of himself as well as Batman. And that's going to put a lot of stress on his joints in his legs and his hips. He's going to need some sort of inner structure that will be able to support that weight from the both of them, as well as give everything some rigidity. My girlfriend and I were talking about this problem and my frustrations with it, and she happened to have an outdoor plant hanger that you stick into your garden that fit the bill perfectly. It had that rigidity, and with a few small modifications, it worked perfectly. I drilled a hole in his foot to let the extra length of the support come through and to later be slotted into the base to give the whole statue some extra stability. I broke out my light gloves that my friend gave me a few years ago for Christmas because I couldn't see where the rod was coming through. She doesn't believe me that I wear them. Pew pew! Once the support rod was in place, I could start gluing everything back together. From here, it was just a matter of using tinfoil to stuff him like a Thanksgiving turkey. I wanted to give a little weight to this statue since there was only going to be one point of contact with the base. He had the open gap in the back of his foot, so I decided to use these lead hunting pellets for an air gun that someone gave me over 20 years ago. I dabbed some hot glue around the hole I drilled and the support structure, and to keep the pellets in place and from rattling around, I decided to mix and pour some resin on it. First we had to get the pellets in the foot. And here we see me in my natural environment, impatiently pouring them all over the table. And then, cue the resin montage. While the resin was curing, it was time to work on Batman and to get rid of this god-awful cape. After removing it, I saved it to use as a template for the new cape. Since Batman is being broken, he needs to look like he is in pain and in a painful pose. I came up with a plan, and if it didn't work out, the worst case scenario was I was going to have to go buy another Batman and start over. I cut out a large piece of his back, and using a heat gun, I heated up his middle section, which allowed the plastic to be pliable and stretchy, and I could fold him into position. This worked so well. Uh, way better than I hoped for. And damn, it gave him a shelf. Look at that thing. I also sliced the tops of his feet, warmed them up, and glued in tin foil to make sure they're pointed in a downward fashion like he was being lifted up against his will. Now that the resin was dry and I had the tin foil out, I could fill in that small gap in the bottom of his foot. And then I had to undertake the hardest part of this whole project in my opinion. Figuring out how to attach his arms and hands, and make sure Batman is in the right position. This definitely took some time. Some marking, adjusting, gluing, breaking it, remarking, regluing, that whole fun process. But once I got one arm in place, it was a lot easier to attach and adjust the second one. In the position Batman was in, he was a little squirrely on top of Bane's knee. So in order to keep him in position, I drilled a small hole and inserted a piece of metal to then be inserted into Batman's back to keep him locked into place.
Next, I tried to use my rotary tool to remove some material to make it look like Bane's hand was gripping into Batman's thigh. However, I ended up removing too much material and I had to go back in and fill it in. And it didn't quite work like I wanted it to. So I put Batman back in place and glued Bane's hands to his arms. And then it was time for epoxy putty. Three, two, one, go. While I let this putty dry, I had a few loose ends to take care of. One being glue Batman's head back on, the other being dealing with Bane's tube situation. I got some clear tubing and these really nice looking brass fittings that would work really well for the ports on the back of his head as well as his backpack and on the back of his hand. I also had to glue on Bane's head since he had a big void under there that had to be filled in with putty as well. I filled in those gaps, and then I ran into a small problem. Someone pointed out that I need to sculpt a pained expression on Batman's face. Sculpting is not my specialty, nor have I delved into that at all. An alternative option that I came up with was to break Bane's arm and reposition it so he's now palming Batman's face, hiding that need to sculpt. Ultimately, I think this looks and works much better and looks so much more aggressive. I also had to trim down the piece of metal on Bane's knee because it became increasingly hard to insert or remove Batman as each piece was locked into place. Now that I've filled in all those new holes that I just made, it was time to start working on Bane's tubes. I tested out two different colors and found that mixing the two gave me the best results. I cut the tubes to length and sealed one end with hot glue. In my infinite wisdom, trying to push paint and air into a sealed tube results in this. A mess. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad. But after smartening up and leaving a small air hole in the other end, the paint could easily flow through the tube and both ends could be sealed. I widened the holes in his backpack to glue in the brass fittings, which will then house the tubes once everything's locked into place, as well as drilling out and widening the hole in the back of his glove to also insert that brass fitting. And now it's time to sand. Everyone's favorite process. No, it's no one's favorite process. This next part was a little tricky. Now that everything was sanded, I needed to make the armbands that would go around the tube that was going to be affixed to his back. So I had to do this in a couple different stages. I had to glue the tube, sculpt the armband, wait for that to dry, glue the other part of the tube, then sculpt the other armband, and then wait for that to dry, and then prime the whole model. During this time, I also went to the store to figure out what I'm going to do for a base. I came across these heavy wooden cake displays that were perfect. I started by drilling a hole most of the way through the base. I then measured out the excess of the support structure coming out of Bane's foot, and then used my rotary tool to cut the excess off. 
As for painting this, I didn't shoot the process, but I sprayed it down with a satin black spray paint. I kept it pretty simple because I didn't want to take away from the statue itself. After priming both of the models, it was time to get these guys painted. Batman needed some battle scars. I got out my file set and gave him some nice cuts and scuff marks so it looked like he really got beat up. He was a pretty easy paint job. I kept with the original comic book colors. He wore his gray suit with that very punchy blue cowl, gauntlets, and boots. And that bright yellow utility belt. Some of these paints weren't the greatest. I quickly realized that, and to get that vibrant color that I needed, sometimes I had to paint everything twice. But I made do with what I had. Painting Batman's logo and getting it just right was, to me, one of the most important things of this project. It's going to be a focal point when you're looking at it, and if it looks bad, it's going to throw everything off. This was a perfectionist's nightmare, but I powered through it, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. I did a couple light weathering passes on him. I made sure to get in there and hit all that battle damage to make sure it popped. I went in with some dry brushing, as well as highlighting some areas, like his utility belt. And with that, Batman was done, and it was time to move on to Bane. He was a pretty simple paint job, lots of black and lots of skin tone. I ran into the same problem again with the not great paints, so I definitely had to paint things more than once. As you see, I had to do that with the white on his face as well as the neon green on his backpack. Uh, his skin tone didn't take very well, so I had to paint that multiple times over. I painted his waist belt a nice silver, and I also went over his knee pads and gave them a nice highlight and made his eyes nice and red. I went over him with a pretty light wash, just a little darker than his skin tone, just to fill in those recessed areas and give him some definition. I went over and dry brushed the high points of his skin to make sure that looked nice. I went in and picked up some areas and gave them some highlights because uh, he was a lot of black on black on black. After that, he was done. All I had to do was unmask his tubes and glue them into place. Just a little super glue on a Q-tip inside the fitting and the tube slid right in and locked into place perfectly. I did the same process with the fitting on the back of his head and that piece of tubing. And after that, Bane was done. The one last piece of this puzzle was to make Batman's cape. I had done a test where I took two pieces of material and glued a piece of tin foil in between. That way you could crumple it up and it would stay in any position you put it in. I got some lightweight, almost spandex-like blue fabric that was the same as Batman's cowl. And using the same technique, I glued everything together and cut out the general shape of the cape. I used the old cape as a template to cut out the final shape. All that was left was to cut out the piece that would go around his neck, glue it on, and then I could crumple the cape up and it would stay in place. Once that was all set, I could put them together and this project was done. Let's not waste any time and get right to the beauty shots.
Thank you for watching this video and please consider liking and subscribing and also hitting the notification bell so you know every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.